Next, a story about flight and the joys of hot air ballooning. When Swift Current lawyer Carl Bazin wants to get away from it all, he fires up his hot air balloon. I wouldn't say I'm addicted to it, but you always feel that if it's a calm day, maybe because I'm in Swift Current, it's fairly windy here. I always feel if it's a calm day, if I'm not out there flying, it's a wasted day. Thank you. We're gone. Carl is one of five hot air balloonists in Saskatchewan, and the only one flying out of the windy city of Swift Current. Swift Current really isn't a preferred area to do it. It's great for landing sites, but because of the generally high winds here, right. uh, you, you know, if you had your choices, if you wanted to be a balloonist, do a lot of flying, you wouldn't pick Swift Current. But certainly when the, the times that you get in when you're in the air, it's a very nice area to fly in because of the coolies and the, the different landscape that's around here. Carl's been flying for only a year, but he's been thinking about it for a lot longer than that. Actually, my brothers and I laugh because uh, they think it all started when we used to uh, get the uh, bags off the dry cleaning and put them over the uh, uh, register in the house and send them up. And to us, that was a hot air balloon. But uh, it's, it's just a different way of flying. It's very in touch with the ground. Uh, you don't see this from an airplane. We're going to go down to a coulee here. There's a deer right there running right across. You can see him, that mule deer. And uh, you don't see that in an airplane. Recreational hot air balloons seldom go higher than 8,000 feet. Their speed and direction is totally dependent on the wind conditions. Carl prefers to fly at lower altitudes so he can take in more of the scenery. You're flying in the morning, a couple hundred feet off the ground. You basically see the world sort of waking up. You hear the farm animals start coming up, the uh, cars going by, the farm equipment starting up. You smell everything. You smell the fields. You smell everything up. You can hear the animals waking up. And that's a very peaceful uh, and a very nice sensation to, to see. And you'll only get that on ballooning. You won't get that in an airplane. I go kill the members of current radio. Check the flight plan. All okay. So current altimeter 3014. Swift Current Radio Balloon Whiskey Kilo Juliet, over. Hot air balloons are considered aircrafts and pilots must be licensed. For Carl, learning how to fly a balloon helped him overcome his fear of heights. I personally I feel that I have a, uh, what's the word, a fear of heights. Like, I don't like standing on top of buildings either. And I thought, well, I'll get myself into this basket and, you know, I'll just, I mean, once I'm in, I'm gone and I, have not, I can't do anything about it. But actually, uh, the sensation of taking off is almost like that of an elevator. You don't even know that the balloon is off the ground. Uh, there's no sound when it takes off other than the burners, and usually they're, they're gone by the time you're taking off. So it's just sort of this floating away, and then you realize, geez, I guess I'm 1,000 feet in the air, and uh, there's no sensation of movement up there or anything. It's, it's quite a, a different type of feeling than a, a jet taking off or a, a plane. When people see a hot air balloon for the first time, they're usually impressed by its beauty but they also wonder about its safety. The balloon, unless the balloon would have a structural defect in it, it, it almost has a parachuting effect. So for an example, our balloon, if it would lose all its uh, heating capability, it would come down at 600 feet a minute, uh, which really isn't a lot. Uh, it would be a good smack on the ground, but it's not uh, like 120 miles an hour or something like that. You, you feel very safe up there in the balloon. Ballooning can be a very personal activity but pilots have to rely on other people to help them get airborne and to come and get them when they land. When she's not flying, Carl's wife, Sarah, is the balloon recovery crew. She often follows Carl for miles, traveling over fields and dirt roads. It's her job to pick him up from wherever the wind has carried him. This is going to be a little bumper. Hardly at all. Sometimes Sarah's father, Kelly, will lend a hand with takeoffs and landings so that she and Carl can enjoy the thrill of flying together. Do you find it a relaxing sport? <laughs> Did you get that? Yes, I do. <laughs> a rude sport. <laughs> serene? Very serene. Actually, it's, I imagine it as being heaven up there. It's very calm. It's nice. Now, Carl tells me this is a really romantic thing to do. Uh, is that true? <laughs> Actually, yes, it is very nice. Uh, the only thing that isn't romantic is when you blast the burner. 
It's nice up there, though. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we'd hate to blow the myth that uh, Bruning is romantic, but as you've seen, it's got this romantic part, and it's got a lot of hard work to it, too, when you're setting it up and uh, getting it ready to go, but... But uh, once you're off the ground, the work's over, so you fly and uh, you're good for about an hour or so, and then uh, back to reality, I guess. <laughs> Carl and Sarah draw a great deal of pleasure from ballooning. For them, it's an experience worth celebrating when they touch down at the end of the day. So where does this tradition start here? It's actually, it's from the first balloon flights with, uh, in France. The first balloon, uh, balloonists, when they landed the balloon, the peasants uh, didn't know uh, what it was, so they chopped it up and smashed it up. So uh, since that first balloon flight, the second balloon flight, Frenchmen carried champagne on to show the people that they landed to that they were uh, civilized gentlemen from France, so they always carry champagne on balloons. Very nice. And after a good flight and a safe landing, we uh, toast it off with a glass of champagne. <laughs> <laughs>